Let us all stand. Welcome to our 10.30 a.m. worship service. And those on the radio, welcome to our 10.30 a.m. worship service. May the blessings of God enrich you this morning. Amen. Amen. Sorry. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This none other than the house of God. None other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven, Genesis chapter 28, 16, and 17. Let us sing our praise songs together, amen. Good to see each and every one of you. We're coming from live from YouTube, from KJLH, and every other source. I welcome you all. We are all living in Jesus today. Amen. And we Amen. thank you all Amen. for visiting us today. All right, our responsive reading will come from Ephesians. Ephesians, that is the New Testament, fourth chapter, first through the seventh verse. Ephesians, fourth chapter, first through the seventh verse, and we're reading from the New King James Version. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling and with which you were called. Congregation? With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. O Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and one Father. Every 
everybody. But, but to, to each one, one of us, grace, grace was, was given, given according to the measure of and the gift of Christ. of your life, you should be praising Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Father, for bringing us the Savior. We thank you, Father, for giving us a way when we thought there was no way. We thank you we have an escape, and we thank you for leaving us the Holy Spirit to indwell in us so we may have a moral center in where to go, what direction we need to move in, and how we need to be just a little closer to you. We thank you and we praise your name for all that you've done. It is prayer time here at Trinity. So uh, how are we doing in the back back there, ushers? 
We doing all right? All right, amen. All right, if you like to stand, stand. If you want to stay seated, please stay seated. But we are here to go to the throne. Dear Heavenly Father, we are just here to thank you for our families, our brothers and sisters, our aunties and uncles, our husbands and wives, our sons and daughters, our nieces and nephews, our cousins, our stepfathers, our stepmothers, our father-in-laws, our mother-in-laws, our play cousins and play aunties, all those that we invite to be into our family, Lord. We ask that you bless each and every household, Lord. Bless them more abundantly. Give them the peace and joy that you will want for each and every one of us, Lord. We ask that you bless each and every household financially. We ask that you bless them spiritually. We ask that you bless them physically, Lord. Because we know the challenges that this life brings, we need you each and every day. Father, help us to study our Bibles, to hide your word in our hearts, so that we may become just a little bit closer to you according to your word. We want to do your will, Father. So Father, now we ask that you touch the bereaved, the ones that have lost loved ones, Lord, and they're struggling right now because there's a hole in their heart and they are reeling. So we ask that you just ask the Holy Spirit to touch them and just continue to let them know that you have never left them, that you are with them during this time of sorrow and pain and hurt, that it just seems like there's nothing that can fill it. But we know there is one that can fill that hole, one can fill that pain, one can touch them with love, Father. And we ask that you continue just to let them know by whatever means you see necessary. Maybe it's a phone call, maybe it's a visit from someone, or maybe it's just a simple somebody just sitting there silently, just being with them, Lord. Now, Father, we turn to Jacksonville where the young man decided he wanted to shoot some folks because he did not bear love with one another. As your word says, we just read it. Bear love with one another. He didn't know how to love, Father. He didn't know what to do with all that anguish that he had within him. But we are asking that since this tragedy has taken place, that we take this opportunity to say how you deal with that anguish is with love. You deal with it with love and more abundantly. We ask that you just touch each and every family that had been affected by that tragedy, as well as the shooting down in Orange County where the man traveled across country to shoot his ex-wife. Father, we need you now more than ever because heartache and tragedies are on every turn. You can't hardly walk out the door without seeing something. You can't turn on the news without hearing something. You can't turn on the radio about some wrong thing that has happened that is not of you. So we ask, help us with our love. Now, we ask that you watch over our pastor as he's traveling, Lord, his family. Let him recuperate and come back reinvigorated and come back with the strength and the love for your people so he can move forward your word and do the things that you would have him to do, Father. Now we ask that you touch each and every church that is open up in your son's Jesus Christ's name and is teaching sound doctrine, Lord. Not what the preacher at the pulpit wants to say, but what you want to say through him. We ask that you touch each and every one, Lord. We thank you for this congregation. And we thank you for each and every person that's listening on the radio. 
that's watching on YouTube and those that just want to get a little closer to you, Father. So now we ask that your son, Jesus Christ, walk behind us to push us, walk beside us to accompany us, and walk in front of us to guide us. And all of God's people said, Amen.
spirit of gratitude, in the spirit of thanksgiving, I am grateful. Grateful that God gave breath, the very first gift that God gave is breath. I am grateful because I know Jesus. He's always known me, but I did not know him. I was born in North Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1953. Right, it's not my fault. I attended the University of Pittsburgh from 1971 to 1978. I left Philadelphia when I was 17 years old. Completed my studies at the University of Pittsburgh, majoring in philosophy and psychology. And on December 31st, 1978, with $150 and a one-way ticket, I flew to Los Angeles, California. Since that time, I am glad. Hallelujah, happy, and thank you, Jesus, glad that I heard his voice. Always heard, but I did not know. And so um, I came to Trinity for, in 1984 because my best friend and my partner and my ministry partner and my convinced me that if I did not go to church with her, I could no longer date. So I came to Trinity in 1984 and sat in the back under the balcony and Dr. Harshaw was preaching and prior to that, Dr. Mason. I don't understand, I did not understand anything. I didn't know nothing. I barely knew the 23rd Psalm, the Lord's Prayer, but I always remembered the Apostles' Creed. So the Holy Ghost, the Pastor Harshaw, spoke on the third or the fourth Sunday in August of 1985. I came to Christ, came down. By then I had moved and I came down this aisle, stood in the center. Pastor Harshaw prayed the sinner's prayer with me. And on the first Sunday in September 1985, September 1st, I was baptized in that pool. So since that time, God has whipped me and whipped me and lovingly kept me. Listen and for the voice, his voice. Thank you for allowing me to bring the message. Uh, Pastor Tunstall on vacation, he will be returning next week. I thank my ushers, the guardians of the sanctuary, my brother deacons. I served as a deacon here for several years before I announced my call to the ministry. I thank you for the music department and the choir. You always sing so well. And I thank you, my brothers and sisters, and those I do not know, if you know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you are adopted into the family of God. So you are my brothers and sisters. 
So I thank you for attending. To those who are listening by way of the various devices and on KJLH 102.3, thank you for tuning in. And today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In everything, give thanks to God, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning each of us. There is a preface before we, I, preach this morning. We're living in an age and a time where false and truth are battling neck and neck. It looks like the false is winning. But I hear a word that says, there are more who are with us than there are those who are with them. The context before we read and hear, I like to read into your hearing Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. Our text for the message will be in the gospel according to John. But this God does not, cannot, will not ever side with false shepherds. God will not tolerate false, wicked shepherds. Hear the word of God from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 8. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds, who feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away and not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doings, says the Lord. But I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them, and they will fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper. A king shall reign and justice will be served. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this, his name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness, Jehovah Sitkenu. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking. Let us pray. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is in your midst. Repent and believe. 
the gospel of the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for Jesus. Father, I thank you for these, your people. Thank you for shepherding us through many dangers, toils, and snares. Father, now is the hour. Spirit of the living God, descend upon me and lead me, melt me, mold me, fill me, shape me, use me, for here I am, your servant, O oh God. Bless these, your people. Prepare their hearts. Holy Spirit, you are the voice. Speak now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our text this morning is from the Gospel according to John. John chapter 10, verses 11. And Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21, which I will read at the end. John chapter 10, and I'm going to read verses 11 through 18 and verse 27. Today is August 27. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. John chapter 10, verse 27. From the New King James Version. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power. I have power. I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Christ, the good shepherd. Christ, the good shepherd. Who are you following? Who are you listening to? Who influences you? Strengthens truth? Who? Or are you a legend in your own mind and following your own voice? Christ the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd. Jesus' discourse on himself as the good shepherd flows directly from John chapter 9 as Jesus continued to talk to the very same people and disciples and the religious 
leaders, scribes, and the Pharisees. We'll leave the hypocrites out for a while. The problem of chapter 9 was this. Israel was led by false shepherds who drew them astray from the true knowledge and kingdom of Messiah. John chapter 9, verses 39 through 41. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world, this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remains. Your sin remains. You say you don't see. But you do. And you keep on doing what you do. Jesus is a true shepherd. The Old Testament, God is called the shepherd of Israel. Then he led his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them in safety so that they were not afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. Christ, the good shepherd, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, the great shepherd, Christ, the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Provider, a shepherd, God provides. You recall in Genesis chapter 24, Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. And Abraham named the place the Lord will provide. He named the place where he was about to sacrifice his son. You know the story. But there was a ram in the bush. God always has. A ram or rams in the bushes. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. Always enough, more than enough, forever enough. David, in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Holy Spirit leads, provides, strengthens, protects, turns the battle to the gates. God, shepherd of Israel, Psalm 91, we who dwell in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. For I will say of the Lord, he is my rock and my fortress and my bulwark. Jesus, the good shepherd. God, a tender shepherd. Shepherds are tender. Did not the prophet Isaiah, the prophet of the son in chapter 40, verse 11, write, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. The good shepherd will leave the 99 and go after the one. There are many ones out here today. 
There are many ones in here. There are many ones who raised their hand like they didn't know Jesus, but who are you fooling? As the songwriter would say, who's zooming's who? God knows your heart. And you can raise your hand when the preacher asks who knows Jesus at a homegoing ceremony or homegoing service, and everybody will raise their hand. But watch how they live. Watch how they move. Watch what they do, not just what they say. Jesus, God, the shepherd, Jeremiah 31.10, hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands afar of off. He says, he who scattered Israel will gather them and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. If you want to know what's happening in the world, how God is moving or where he is moving, look at Israel. All eyes look to Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Ezekiel 34, 11, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. 37, 24, My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall have all one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. The good shepherd, the true shepherd, provides. He's tender. Oh, but he'll go after that hard head, stiff necked, disobedient one, capture him, bruise or wound him as he did yours truly. Five years it took in early stages. Progressive. I didn't have a big bang blowout experience. My life and my calling, God's calling my life has always been progressive. I had bumps and bruises and places along the way, but he gradually and patiently and lovingly and firmly guided and twisted and used the system like a 502 and spending time in the LA County Jail for three days where I preached my first sermon in 1988. By the way, I was training as a deacon, so I was still had one toe in the world. He almost chopped that toe off. But he got me, and he kept me, and he keeps me. I hear his voice. Do you? Do you follow or do you ask permission to disobey? And you hear, he says, okay, that's not him. He'll tell you. You want it? You got it, Toyota. Go ahead. And God will turn, over, turn them over to a reprobate mind, those who want to continually live in their disobedience and are comfortable in their who-ness. Keep being who you are. God sees. He knows. When we stand here, we can see every eye, every head that's bowed, every person that's nodding. But you know, this might be the only place in the sanctuary where someone can rest. He gathers and feeds his flock like a shepherd. He gives. He gave. Sacrificed his life. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. When I think about the good shepherd giving, did not Jesus give his life? But he came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. You see, he gave his, his life. I think of the cross, Calvary. Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He gave his life that we may have eternal life. You see, 
The hireling does not care. The hireling is a quitter. The hireling runs when times get tough, when the congregation gets on his nerves, sends an email and resigns. But the Savior, the Savior, he died on the cross. That's the foundation. What more can he do? He gave. He gives. Do you hear? Got your ears on. His ministry, he, he extends his hand. Gave his heart. He gives. His heart of compassion and caring. A heart that's concerned. He came to heal the brokenhearted. To deliver those who are held captive in their mind, in their soul. He came and he died. He's still seeking to save the lost. He still is. He's pleading and he's begging and he's sending. Sheep, I'm a sheep, you a sheep. Don't want to be called a sheep. You've been called a lot of other names, but Jesus looks at us as sheep. He didn't call us snakes. I will never stand here and say I am a snake. I might say I'm a lot of other things, but a snake, uh-uh. All right? Let's be clear. Don't ever call yourself a snake. You, you, you set yourself up. Greater is he who lives in me than he who lives in the world, so how can I be that which I am not? I'm a child of God. Chosen. Even when I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, I'm still a child of God. Why does the Lord compare his people to sheep? They are prone to wander, hear me now, sheep, which are sheepish ways. We all have sheep ways. We wander. We bad. <laughs> but you know, Abba is the Hebrew for father. Abba, 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 Father, sheep, not a goat, not the greatest of all time, <laughs> okay, but sheep. Sheep are clean animals, but sheep wander. They have to drink still water. They don't like to work for anything. Sheep are lazy. Don't get offended. Just teach, just, just the word. They wander. Have to, have to be cuddled. Have to be pampered. But they're used as sacrifices. Sheep flock together. Not just birds of a feather. Sheep flock together. Gangs might be gangs of sheep. But they flock together. Sheep are useful, too. They give milk, sheep clothing. I love lamb with some lime sauce. All right? But sheep, the good shepherd knows his sheep intimately. When you read the word of God and see the word knows, K-N-O-W, that means intimate. Adam knew Eve. He had relations. Jesus knows me. Does he know you? Yes, he does. Do you know him? That's on you. Don't say you do. Because if you don't, he will make sure that you do. Forgives you. Corrects you. Ongoing. Once saved, always saved, but progressively we are being sanctified and set apart and cleansed from the inside out. That's called progressive sanctification. Gradually being separated from sin. And then those who may have sinful dispositions, 
that may conflict with you because the word says in 1 Corinthians, uh, beware, bad company will corrupt good morals. Watch the media. Pray for Fannie Willis, the district attorney in, Los, in, in Georgia. Pray for her and her families. Every district attorney that is doing their job and coming down. God is coming down. But he's coming down by those who have been risen up in him who are born again, sanctified, faithful leaders, politicians, teachers, policemen. We are everywhere clothed and cloaked, but God is using those that have willingly or may unwillingly are doing his bidding. How many of us have received the greatest amount of blessings and, and things from devils? Be amazed. But does not the scripture say, be careful how you treat strangers, for many have entertained angels unawares. Be mindful who comes into the house of God. Be mindful who comes in the sanctuary. Be mindful they sit in the back. Be mindful they sit up front. Be mindful if they wander in. Be awake. Stay woke. Got to get up pretty early in the morning? No, you better stay up all night. Figuratively speaking, of course. Wokeness. Stay awake. Be awake. Jesus and the prophets always said, awake, arise, for your light has come. Repent, repent. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is in your midst. Turn around. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Time is running out. No, it's running up. He is a greeter. Several years ago, Kaiser Permanente opened a facility in on Santa Rosalia, Kaiser Permanente Baldwin Hills Medical Office Building, opened in August of 2017. Uh, I served as a greeter in this brand new facility for three years, as a greeter. Everyone who came in, I'm at the front door greeting you and saying, hello, how you doing? You know, similar to those that you see at Walmart, but I greeted everyone, those who were brokenhearted, those who were blind, those who were crippled, and there were some and a whole lot who were crazy. But we still greeted and we still cared and brought them in and ushered them in. Jesus is a greeter. Ushers are greeters. Deacons are greeters. Pastors are greeters. Because Jesus wants those on the outside to come inside. And those on the inside, we want you to stay. He is a greeter. 1 Peter 2, 25, Jesus welcoming the brokenhearted, lost, the least, the lonely, the wanderers, the abused, the mistreated, and the violated. The Christ shepherd, the guardian of the flock. Christ keeps, Christ cares. He's a protector. He's the living shield of faith. 2 Thessalonians 3, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 1 Peter 1, 5, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. And this is my favorite, Jude 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep our feet from falling and to present us blameless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forever. It's a benediction, but it's a blessing right now. Not so with the hireling. The hireling is false. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The, the hireling is a day laborer. He's temporary. All he wants is the money. In Jesus' time, the hireling was hired to take care of the sheep. But if, if, the, if the flock was attacked by more than one wolf, guess what? The hireling ran. I don't get paid for this. I just get paid to fight one. I'm not fighting the whole flock, so I'm out of here. That's a hireling. You got pastors who do the same thing. 
Deacons do the same thing. Members, don't run. You can run, but what? You can't hide. As we draw to a close, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, the hiring is unfaithful, does not know, does not care to know unless they can be used. The hiring is selfish. Isaiah 56, 12, 11, there are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn to their own way. They seek their own gain. Come, each one cries, let me get wine. Let us drink our fill of beer, and tomorrow will be like today or even far better. The hireling is unbelievable, unbelieving, faithless. My people have been lost, God says. Their shepherds have led them astray, Jeremiah 5, verse 6. Hirelings are cowards, have no backbone, don't even have a wishbone. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he runs. Faith is the believing, trust in God, have faith in Jesus, and dwelt with the Holy Spirit. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is believing in action, forgetting all I trust him. Forgiving anyone, I trust him. Faith, believing. The word is believe. Believe what God says. Believe what Jesus says. Believe what the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now. Believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Then as I close, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd comes and crowns. It's messianic. Uh, the chief shepherd, 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Pastors are under shepherds. Jesus is the chief shepherd. Pastors are under shepherds. Elders are under shepherds. Elder shepherds, pastors, priests, worship leaders pastors, prophets, pastors, pastors to our interpret the scriptures, pastors, pastors, our overseers, not like the massa, but we look out and care and look for you and care for you. Even when we don't see you, pastor's heart, we will see you in the spirit and pray for you. And when we see you in the spirit, Believe that you are being prayed for and your answer is on the way. Here's a word for someone. You will sow in tears, but you will reap in joy. That's for somebody who is sad and brokenhearted and been crying all night or possibly crying right now. He will heal the brokenhearted. He does. He'll give you joy in your grief. Peace in your grief. When you trust the good shepherd, he leads you out of the wrong fold into the right flock. He goes before you and leads you by his word. He leads you in and out to find spiritual nourishment. Not just something to consume, but spiritual nourishment. The great shepherd. The great shepherd. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us and you what is pleasing through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. The doors of the church are open. The good shepherd, the chief shepherd, the great shepherd, whose voice are you listening to? There is something about Jesus' voice that resonates within the parts of his people. The longer we walk with him, the more clearly recognizable and distinctive his voice should become to us. Won't you come? Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as our ancestors did on the day of provocation. Come now, all you who will labor and are heavy laden. Come. The doors are always open. Come to Jesus. 
while you have time.